Welcome back to the Charged Up Show. You're listening to episode 16 with Ben Dalby. Ben had a really cool hockey career growing up in Paris, Ontario with his brothers Zach Dalby, who played in the NHL for several years and still playing pro, and Phil Dalby. Ben eventually got a full-ride scholarship to Clarkson University in New York where he, was, he played in the NCAA. Afterwards, Ben got the opportunity to work for the NHL. That is where he currently is working for the St. Louis Blues as a video analysis. We hope you enjoy this episode. Please welcome to the podcast the first of the Dolpy brothers, Ben Dolpy. So how's it going? What are you doing right now? What's everything going on for you? Well, um, here in St. Louis, uh, a little trap down here. I was considered coming home, um, but with everything going on with the quarantine, I just decided to to stay down here. I just moved apartments on Monday, so um, just getting everything sorted out there. And you know, obviously, with with everything that's been happening with the news around the league returning, so we're, a little bit of work with that. And um, you know, for a while there, we were preparing for a draft. Um, and we still are. We don't know when it's going to be. There's no news on that. So we're just kind of going status quo with that, preparing for the draft. And, and uh, yeah, it's really hot down here in St. Louis. Um, I keep it cold in my apartment. As you can see, I'm wearing a sweater. But, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I just wish I could be home, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Would you say well, you're uh, you're working a lot more, or like working a pretty decent amount right now, even though it is through all this, like, isolation time and all of that? Yeah, like the thing, you know, me being this, I'm the video coordinator. So, you know, my, my job is to provide video to all of our scouts. And, you know, since they can't travel with, with everything going on and all the leagues canceled, uh, my workload did, did, you know, it increased quite a bit um, because that's how we had to do our scouting was through video. So it was pretty crazy there for a bit, but it's starting to cool off a little bit with, you know, the news that's been coming out, returning to play. Um, you know, all signs point towards the draft not being later this month. So it's going to be, you know, obviously in the fall. So, um, yeah, for a while there, I was working a little more than usual, um, which was kind of nice because everyone was, you guys know how it is. Do you guys start this podcast? Cause you had, <laughs> you, you, you had so much time on your hands. Right. But I was kind of lucky. Um, I had so much to do and it was kind of helping the days pass. Like I didn't feel too much boredom. Um, like most people were feeling during, during those first couple months. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, I mean, for me, it's definitely important to keep that routine because I know like, especially for us with school, we had that kind of first three week break and I mean, we were all kind of going insane. So it's, I mean, once we started this and um, online school kind of kicked back up, it's, it's kind of nice to kind of, you know, you're in your own, you're in your own kind of vicinity and it's kind of getting back to normal. So it's slowly, but surely we'll get there, but. How, how was it with school with you guys? Like, uh, I know you guys started this, which I think is super cool. I'm kind of jealous because if I was your age, that, that's exactly what I'd be doing is what <laughs> you guys are doing. Uh, how was it? How was it? Like, or is it? You guys still doing school with, with over Zoom or, or what is it? What are you doing? Yeah, so um, for me, I don't know about the other guys. I have, I'm pretty science heavy this semester. So I have chemistry and physics and uh, we're kind of getting down to the barrel, but it was tough at the start, especially like the new concepts, but they kind of, they get what's all going on, so it's not too too heavy content. It's like yeah, they're keeping think, it more yeah. keeping it more simplistic because they know we can't get taught by an actual person, right? Like they, you I, guys like, like of, it better or what? Uh, uh, I, don't know. I miss the school aspect. I don't know. Yeah, I gotta socialize, right? Yeah, I miss definitely the socializing, but being able to do everything on your own time is it's pretty nice as well. That is nice. It is nice for sure. Mm. Uh, what are the rules like in St. Louis right now? <laughs> to be honest with you, man, it, everything's open. Uh, oh, really? You know, with, with, I mean, before obviously with the, with the, the, the protesting and all the riots, um, it, it was open. Like uh, now we have a curfew because of all that stuff going on, but yeah, but I, I would say two weeks ago, they opened everything back up. Um, I live in St. Louis city, like just the outskirts of the city. So I'm in a, I'm in a different County, but the state opened like May 15th, I want to say. Uh, and then the, the, the city of St. Louis opened like a week and a half ago. Uh, I have been out. I have been out and went to a, a restaurant. Uh, there's a bunch of different requirements. You got to wear a mask until you sit at your table. They check your temperature. You, there, there was no one else around us. Uh, you had to order on your phone. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's, they're, they're trying their best to get small business, businesses back up and running. Um, 
you know, while they're also dealing with all the protests that are going on now. And it's a little crazy with that. Uh, every night it's been kind of wild, not, not near me, thank God. Um, but definitely, uh, not far from me. So it's, it's been crazy. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary. The news right now. It's yeah. What's it like having a, a curfew? I thought that's kind of, I know it's happened before, but I, it's kind of a weird situation as well. Yeah. Like, uh, the first, the first one was Monday night or, or what, what today's Thursday. So I think the first one was Tuesday. And then the second one was last night. It's like an Amber alert. You get a text right to your phone. Everyone. Oh, wow. knows, yeah. Like I was driving and I looked down and I was like, Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I was like, please be indoors by 9 p.m. tonight from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, uh, the following morning. So it's it's a little weird getting that text message. I remember I was talking to my dad about it. And, uh, but, you know, when you're watching TV, you're just seeing all the bad stuff. You know, like I still – I went I went grocery shopping yesterday. It was fine. You know, it's not like it's mayhem all day. It's just when it gets dark out, it gets a little crazy in some areas. So, um, you know, it's just the times are in. Yeah. So we'll jump over to the hockey topic now because obviously that's what people are listening to it for. But I don't know if you saw, you obviously played in the BCHL, their new fighting rule. Um, if you didn't see it, it's I think on your second fight, you're getting suspended now or you're missing games. I don't know if you saw that. What What's your opinion on that? Yeah. You know what? I, I did see it. I think I saw it yesterday on Twitter or something. Um, you know, when I played out there, it was, uh, I'm sure it was the same for Zach when he was out there. It was just five minutes for fighting. You didn't even get kicked out of that game. Um, and you could have as many fights as you want. Um, I don't know. You know what? Uh, everything's moving that way. It's hard to have an opinion on it. Everything's moving in that direction. So it's hard uh, for a league like that not to kind of get with the times. Um, my thought proce process on it is, you know, I, I do th think hockey has a – or fighting has a, a place in hockey. Um, you know, accountability – like I played college hockey and I'm sure we'll get to it. Um, but there's no fighting allowed in college hockey. Um, it doesn't seem to be a huge issue, but there is some times where there's some kids running around and I, I might even have been that guy at times, uh, you know, just trying to, you know, hit everything you see. And sometimes you're thinking, nah, if, if, if there was fighting allowed, that guy wouldn't be acting like that. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of like in the middle, I think as time progresses and, kids at the grassroots level are coming up with no fighting it probably will be out of the game eventually um but i do think it's very important to have in the game because i think at the end of the day accountability is huge and uh the intimidation factor in some games is important as well um we'll just have to see how it plays out really i, I was surprised on how short it was like the ohl i think is three and then on your fourth but like this is just you got one that's a five minute and a second one i thought that was Expect a bit yeah, yeah, especially going from what it was before. Like like I said, like yeah. five minutes, like I got in a fight in the BC League. I, I served my penalty and was right back out there. It was unbelievable. I kind of miss it. But, um, you know, I wasn't much of a fighter or anything, but it was kind of cool to have that, you know, you're, you know, in junior in that league, you don't just have tough guys. You have, you have guys that can play the game too. Like I, there's a guy named Patrick Sexton who played with us out in BC. Uh, he's the assistant coach there now, actually. And, uh, he was like one of our best shutdown def defensemen, but he was also a tough guy. So he could fight and then we wouldn't lose him for the rest of the game, you know? So yeah. that, that aspect of it's lost for sure. Yeah. So obviously we'll jump in slowly on your career and uh, your uh, episode's actually going to go ahead of Zach's, but um, we had him on last night. We had an awesome conversation with him. Ooh, you guys both went to Penticton. What was it like kind of, I don't want to say being behind him, but obviously he had a path and he talked about it a little bit too. What was it like going behind him growing up? It was, it was huge. You know, um, people are always like touched. Like they think that's a touchy subject for me, like following in my brother's footsteps, but I, I don't think I would have gotten as far as I did even without him. Um, you know, I saw him go through so much stuff in his career. And I'm sure you guys got to that, you know, in, in your, in your chat with him. Um, you know, it was just cool to just watch. Like he had some really highs and some, so a lot of lows in his life. And I just got to, I got a front row seat, seat to it. I, I saw how hard you had to work. Um, you know, I saw how much you have to love the game to, to, to go far. Um, and as far as Penticton, it, the, the thing about Penticton that was so good is that I had the same billets as he had and I had the exact same head coach as he had. So 
I was coming in like comfortable, you know, moving. Uh, I don't even know how many kilometers out west it is, but it's it's far. Uh, and uh, moving away from home, which I've already at that point lived two years away from home, but I was in northern Ontario, so it wasn't as bad. Um, but just to jump into a billet family, I already knew, I already had a relationship with, and already like knowing so much about the coach, it was such an easy transition, and I was I was lucky to have that. Sure. Um, uh, let's I'll get right into it. You touched on it, right? Uh, playing in Pembroke for two years. What was that like? I'm I'm pretty familiar with Pembroke. I'm sure Nate and Keith aren't. So what was it like well, playing in Ottawa? Right? I think I've been there a couple times. Is yeah, that a couple hours. hours. Yeah, it's like uh, 45 minutes uh, northwest of Ottawa, okay. along 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 the uh, the Ottawa River there. Right. So, um, it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, I had great billets, John and Karen Lee. I have to shout them out. Um, and Al- Alan and Jackie Profili were the billets in Penticton. Amazing people too. I, they can't go unnamed. But uh, my billets in Pembroke. First time moving away from home. Uh, we had a family friend that knew them. Um, great city, like just not even city. It's a town, you know, it's a small town. Um, they love hockey there. I had an unbelievable coach in Sheldon Keefe. Uh, I was extremely lucky to be honest with you guys, like just lucky to, to be out there and, and, and play for him for a year was just incredible or a year and a half, I guess I, I should say. Yeah. Uh, got a chance to play some international hockey too, which was good with him, uh, as the, as the coach, I can't say enough things about Pembroke uh, in a positive way. It was, it was incredible. Um, obviously moved on to Penticton and getting traded and everything, but you know, I think about Pembroke all the time. It was a huge for my development as a player and a person. So it was, yeah, I miss it there. Cool. Would you say that that's where like your, your bare bones was kind of created to go to, to then go to Penticton and stuff like that? Yeah. Like I, so I was drafted to the OHL. Um, I played a little bit of junior B and I didn't really know what type of player I was, you know, like as a, as a 16 year old junior B in Brantford at that time, uh, you know, now they own Caledonia, but the owners, they, they spent a lot of money on older players and, you know, guys that were coming down from the OHL. And I didn't get a ton of ice time. I was 16 and just kind of playing a fourth line role. And, and Sheldon got a hold of me and brought me up to Pembroke and, and, and pretty much turned me into a, a top six forward type player. Um, and I kind of, like it changed every the way I saw the game, the way I played, and, and and a lot of my success from that point on was created there. So yeah, exactly what you said. It, you know, my identity as a player was kind of forged there. Cool. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any crazy stories about playing in Pembroke? Obviously, it's a small town. It's northern. We had a uh, Sean Jenner on. He t- said life he played in the in the Noge, and it's a lot <laughs> different than here. He had a lot of crazy stories. To tell us you got anything from Pembroke? <laughs> I'm sure if I if I thought about it, there'd be some crazy things, but it is different up there. Like it's the same province as all of us back home, but like they're a little different. They they, they live, you know, there's no ketchup on the table. There's ranch. I don't know if you guys are <laughs> familiar with that, but that was always weird to me. Like I was like, where's the ketchup? They're like, Oh, oh, you want ketchup? Like we like put our we put like ranch on our fries. I was like Jeez, this is going to take so much adjusting. Um, but no, uh, as far as like crazy stories, uh, one one pretty cool thing that I was involved with up there is, I don't know if you guys have seen it, that gong show video, the junior lifestyle. Have you ever seen that, Maddie? I don't, I don't think so. It's yeah, gong sure. show did a video. They they were like kind of like an up and coming company at the time. Oh. It makes me feel old to say that for some reason, but uh they they did like a junior a lifestyle video on our team and it was just kind of cool like they spent like you know 48 to 72 hours with us they saw a road game and a home game they came to a party oh wow. they didn't put any of that they didn't put any of that stuff in in the video but <laughs> um it was that that was kind of cool like i think for me just looking back on that time like being in high school playing for the the team you know, which is the number one thing to do in Pembroke is watch the Lumber Kings, which is just a really cool experience. Everyone knew who you were. Um, everyone was extremely nice. Um, but no no crazy things off the top of my head. I'd have to think about that for a bit. Fair enough. No, that's good. Yeah. Do you think that it was um, just because Zach, Zach was, he was a really good player. And um, do you think it was hard to to have the name, the Dalpy name? Like to, I don't know how to word this question um right but you find it always have to live up to or like be the best because of your brother yeah 
it's a good question. It's hard to, it's hard to phrase. I know what you're trying to say for sure. Um, for me, I didn't, I never looked at it that way. I think it's easy to look at it that way. Um, but for me, I was just trying to like be better. You know, I was trying to be better than him. Um, we had, we have like a pretty good competitive bond between the two of us. So like from the outside, it might seem like that, but, but my mindset was never like, Oh, I have to be as good as Zach. Like I was just every day trying to be, trying to beat him, you know, like mm-hmm. trying to beat him in sprints, trying to be- beat him when we would shoot pucks, uh, when we play games, shooting pucks uh, outside. And then as far as on the ice goes, when we would go off to our, you know, I go off to play junior, he was going off to play uh, professionally. Um, a lot of people chirped me for sure. Like there was chirps on the ice, like you're not as good as your brother and stuff. But like, I never let that stuff get to me. I just, I love the game, man. I just, I just show up to compete and um, yeah, you know, there near the end i was kind of like oh okay it doesn't look like i'm, I'm gonna make it type thing but forever i was like i'm gonna make it. i'm gonna be better than him yep. you know in, in, a, in a healthy way and we, we always we've always been like that i think still to this day like you know i'm still hungry to win a stanley cup on this side of the aisle and same with zach as a player and maybe as a staff member one day too but my, i'm looking at it like i'm gonna get that first stanley cup man we're still racing we're still competing for so sure. that's the way i look at it yeah it's always healthy to have that you know obviously as an athlete have that competition between, you know, I have an older brother too. Right. So it's, it's always good to chase. And um, I mean, you, at the end of the day, you become a better player of yourself, right. If anything, it just benefits you. So no, that's, that's good to hear. It's yeah. obviously a natural kind of feeling as well. Yeah. And, and, and just to add on that too, we have an older brother named Phil and uh, out of the three of us, he's probably the toughest. And he was huge for both of us. Like he kept us both in line. Like me and Zach butt heads a lot growing up. Uh, just because I was the young, the young brother trying to copy Cat, the older brothers. But Phil kept us in line. Phil, Phil was like, he, we owe we owe a lot to him just making us tough. Um, so he can't he can't go unnamed too and all that. For sure, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I I, I got my brother. Uh, my brother didn't have much of a career, but he played in Paris a couple of years, and I I beat him pretty good on the point totals already. So there you go. Because <laughs> I passed him, I I texted him. Uh, hey, was, hey, is it true? Is it true you got traded for like seven players or something? Yeah, but it's like a te- <laughs> technicality. But yes, technicality. Hey, man. No matter how far you make it in career, you can you have that you have that at the end of the day. Yeah. You always say that. Don't can when you're old. When you're old, and you tell your kids there's no technicality at that point. You got traded for seven guys. How many people can say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flex. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next thing I want to talk about um, is playing in Penticton, and then we'd like to hear we we had a, a couple two D one athletes, not as much many as we like. Uh, we actually didn't ask Zach this, but we want to know your commitment story and how how that happened. And I've heard it from your dad, but I, I'd like to hear it from you. And Zach said you had other offers. And I, can you tell us your story on how you committed? Yeah. So my second year in Pembroke. Um, you know, I had a really good year. My first year was decent. I was, I, you know, I, I thought I did okay. Um, Cause that, this, this goes back to Pembroke, this story, uh, just being committed. Um, and uh, my second year, I, I came hot out, hot out of the gate. Uh, you know, led, I was leading the league in points for a little bit. Uh, I played for, I played for in the world junior challenge with team Canada and I had a great season. I led the team and everything and I had no offers, not one. Um, and I was just like, what's going on here? Like, I thought I, I thought I deserved something at that point. And uh, there was talk. I was talk, talking to some teams. But at that point, it was just talk. Like a, a team would call me and I would they'd get to know me as a player. But one of the teams was Clarkson. Um, and they, they liked me, but they didn't seem like they wanted to make any sort of uh, commitment to me. Um, but over the summer after my second year in Pembroke, I got traded to Penticton. And – for some reason, like going out there has a big effect on teams. It's a, it's a really good league and a lot of schools respect it. And they knew I was at that point, I was a left winger in Pembroke and Penn Tickton wanted me to come in and play center. And I've played center my whole life growing up, but in junior, I kind of switched to left wing. Sheldon had me play left wing a lot in Pembroke and he kind of saw me as a winger. Um, but Clarkson heard I was becoming a centerman and they called me right away and they seemed more interested in that for some reason. They hadn't even seen a game really where I played center. Um, but I go out West. Uh, I played two games with Penticton and I had seven offers. Like it was crazy. Oh. Um, 
I think I had four points in the two games and it was in a the showcase out there. Um, but the first office uh, offer was, uh, was Clarkson and they had two, two of their assistant coaches out there, uh, Andy Jones and Phil Waugh. And, uh, they, they talked to me right after the second game and they offered me a full ride right then and there. Um, and there was four other teams there that offered me right away. Uh, and then there was a, a day after that, there was a few other teams that called and offered me. So I did have like some options. I think Clarkson and like three other teams were the only schools that were full rides. Um, and I think that's a huge thing for me, just being able to, you know, not have my parents pay for school. Like it, it was kind of like a pride thing for me and Zach. We wanted to be good enough that our parents didn't have to pay for school. Mm -hmm. um, so a full, full ride went a long way with me. And another thing, uh, you know, talking to all these schools at once, like, Vermont was telling me, you know, we want you to play another year junior. Uh, Ohio State was saying, you know, we don't give out full rides, and we also want you to play another year junior. Um, trying to think of the other schools. Fair State wanted me to come in the year after. Um, Clarkson at the time was like, hey, we're losing three centermen uh, next season. We want you to come in right away and play, and it's a full ride, and, and it's, it's next season. And for me, I thought that was very, very attractive. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the time and uh, Casey Jones was the head coach and he also recruited and it, it goes back so he recruited Zach to go to Ohio State so there was a history there right. he knew the family uh, he knew he knew us very well he knew Zach very well he never coached Zach he actually ended up going to Cornell before Zach showed up to uh, to Ohio State um, but yeah it was it was interesting because when when Clarkson offered me and they were the only school that did this they said we're, we want to offer you, but you have till Wednesday. This was Sunday. Like you have till Wednesday to, to decide. And I was like, Oh Jesus. So it was quick. And I, I called everyone I possibly knew for advice. Um, and I decided to go with Clarkson just, just on the sheer fact of, you know, they wanted me to step in and play. Um, it was a full ride. I knew the area really well. I'd never been to the school, but it's not far from where Pembroke is. It's only about two and a half hours from Pembroke. So I know that area. Okay. Uh, I knew, I knew guys that have gone there and they gave great, you know, testimonials on, on, on the school. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it went. It, it, it was, it was a tight window to decide. And there was some other really good schools. And I think if I played out the season, there would have been more options. But at the time I was like, I was starving for an offer because of the year before and I didn't have anything. So I was like, let's do it. I'll take it. So that's how she went. Yeah. Cool. It sounded like a pretty good offer too. Like full ride. I'm sure that's, that's a dream. Like you said. Um, yeah. I mean, being it like two hours away from already where you're playing, that's that's pretty, that's a good pick for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's also, it's also close, which is all pretty cool. Like, what, it's five hours from Paris? Yeah, I always make the joke. It's like there's more turns to get to the grocery store than Clarkson. Like, <laughs> I drive down the road, get on the highway at 401. There's like two turns to get to the highway. I drive all the way, all the way up through Kingston, like through Toronto, through Kingston. Yeah. And I get off and exit, go through the border, and that same road you go through the border goes right to my dorm. Like it was like six turns wow. to get to Clarkson. It was like five, five and a half hours. Um, yeah, there's more turns to get to my brother's house in that, <laughs> like in, in the neighborhood in Paris. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah, it, it was nice. Like I, I got my my dad came up a little bit. Um, my billets from Pembroke that I mentioned earlier, they came down all the time. Um, and yeah, it was nice just driving home, not having to fly. Yeah, for sure. What was life like at Clarkson? Would you be able to talk about your adjustment and how it was like on and off the ice? Yeah, it's it's a it's a culture shock there. For one, it's uh, extremely cold and they get a lot of snow. It, it is a little. It's hard to imagine, but it's north of you guys, of us back home. It's it's northeast of it, and the winters are crazy. Um, the the town is extremely small. There's more students than there is people in the town. And also the, the, the school is only about 4,000 people. It's a small school. So it's wow. crazy to think, right? It's almost like a village up there. Yeah. Um, so the school is really cool. Like really small, everyone knew each other. You could walk to every anywhere. Um, they love the hockey team, a lot like Pembroke and a lot like Penticton. Uh, the hockey team's the main focus up there. There's literally nothing else to do. Uh, it's the only division one sport uh, men's and women's hockey. Um, so life outside the rink was, was awesome. Like you, everyone, like I said, you were kind of like the talk of the town. 
being on the team. Uh, the teachers were also season ticket holders. So it was just kind of cool to interact uh, with the teachers a lot and, and also the other students. Um, but again, really cold, <laughs> miserable winters. The schedule is crazy, you know, like you're, you got to work out and practice every day. And then on top of that, you got boatloads of school because it is a higher end education at Clarkson. So the school is really tough. Yep. Um, but, you know, I learned a lot there. On the ice, it was it was awesome. Um, the games at Chile Arena, uh, very underrated. Like, I, I encourage you guys to go search it after on YouTube. Like, the atmosphere is just insane. The student section. Um, we have a band right in the crowd. The band actually travels with the team. They have their own bus. They come on the road with us and, and, and uh, you know, piss off the other team school students, <laughs> student sections. They get kicked out of some rinks. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, man. Like the, the travel's fun. Everything's top notch there. Uh, they put a lot of money into the program. And, yeah, I, I miss it a lot. I miss stepping out on the ice and hearing that crowd because it was it was crazy sometimes. It's, it's a lot different than pro hockey or OHL. Like college hockey has its own kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. feeling to it yeah yeah and i miss that big time yeah, i'm sure you're the probably the top dog there on campus right like if you said like <laughs> there's only the the you know hockey was the only d1 kind of sport and yeah. i'm sure people obviously looked up to that the team and the franchise as well so oh that's cool a lot of pressure though there's a lot of pressure that comes up. like i personally wasn't the top dog i was you know i was a grinder when i got to college i was more of a grinder third fourth line oh, okay. uh, penalty kill type guy but as far as being on the team and, and the scope of the town and, and the school, yeah. But that comes with a lot of pressure. Like I remember Absolutely. my freshman year, we weren't we weren't winning, and you know there was a, there was some booing when we'd be going off the ice sometimes. Um, but as as my years progressed there, we got better, and it was it was a lot more fun winning there. That's for sure. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's what we've what heard from a lot of the uh, from other uh, places and other people we've interviewed who've played in smaller areas. They they all say like. The crowd is so much more genuine. Yeah, because I think like, yeah, like, because you'll be, I don't know, you'll be at the local breakfast spot the next day and you'll see people that were at the game. And like, you'll be, you'll be in warmups and you'll, you'll, you'll skate by a, a family and you'll see them at Walmart the next day. Yeah. So it's just like, there's just a personal feeling to everything. And, and, it, and it's, it's really cool. It's special. Obviously a big city and playing in front of 20,000 people is amazing. Yeah, but there is something really, really special about that small town, thirty-five hundred packed arena. No one else can fit in there. Type feel too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Zach yesterday he told us that you had seven hundred goals off the ice, and and uh, if you know what I mean, other than the seven <laughs> goals on the. Ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing he told us about you that he wanted us to say. <laughs> seven goals. You're. I think. I mean, he he's. So him and Phil, that you know, they're married with kids now, right? So I think they live their life a little vicariously through me. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, there's not much I can say on that. But you, you have fun, you have fun. Let's just say that you have fun. You move away for junior hockey, yeah, or you go to college. It's it's a blast, and um, you know, it's the best. It's the best time of your life. I know older people say that, and like even when I was, you know, during that time, I was like, yeah, whatever. But now that I'm like, have my own place, I have a job. I'm like, yeah, that was the best time. I, I, I'd kill to go back to those days. For sure. Uh, what was the coolest place you played in D1? Uh, on the road. So on the road? Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll go on the road. As far as the as far as our league goes, like the ECAC, um, Harvard's a really cool spot to, to visit. Like they don't get the best fan base, but like just, just like pulling up to Harvard and like being on campus is really cool. Um, but – my favorite place to play is actually only 10 minutes down the road at St. Lawrence University. And they only hold like 2,200 people in there. And it's this old wooden uh, uh, arena. And the, the rivalry between Clarkson and St. Lawrence is like, it's insane. Like you're driving literally 10 minutes down the road is how far the school is in Canton, New York. And you're driving like there's people tailgating for the games and they're like giving our bus the finger I, like an old lady gave our bus the finger one year you know, it's just like it's, it's it's just like this hostile environment like the the hairs on your on your neck stand up during the starting lineup in the anthem because like it's crazy it's you feel you feel the uh anger they have towards you and then once the game starts you can't even hear the whistle um 
you like during timeouts like you came here coach like strategize you're like what's going on yeah uh, the band the bands are fighting like as far as like for, <laughs> for, for airtime like on the songs it's just crazy that so between that and cornell cornell is a great spot too um but outside of our league i would say like we went to belfast ireland and played a, oh, a wow. tournament like a, a promotional yeah. tournament yeah and they had uh, us providence uh Maine and rpi there and we won the tournament um that was really cool there was ten thousand people in, in the stands and, um just to go over to northern ireland and play hockey was just a really strange thing but it was really really fun yeah and yeah like who, well like for nate and keith and even for me a little bit what were the teams that clarkson plays because we know the big ohio like the big 10 and stuff like that but what about clarkson so clarkson plays all the ivy league schools so like cornell harvard uh, Dartmouth, okay. you know, I, I can't name them all off the top of my head, but there's also like St. Lawrence, Quinnipiac's, a, a, you know, a, a pretty good program. Um, I'm trying to think, it's, I'm kind of drawing a blank on every team in the league. You, uh, Union, Union won a national title one year. Yale won a national title one year. Right. Um, that's that's kind of the league, but you do play out of conference too. Like we'll, we, we play, we never played Ohio State, but we played uh, Michigan, Michigan State. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, like we do play those out of conference games too. Okay. And yeah. what do you have to like? Uh, I think it was your dad who told me they've been like top ten in the last three years or something like that. I could be wrong, but they've been really good. Yeah. You saw, you said the progression from your freshman year to your last year. Um, like, what have you seen now? Like that's making them so good. Recruiting is a big thing. So my freshman year it was kind of the start of like a new. Uh, class of recruiting um, and so we had 10 wins my freshman year my sophomore year I think we had 20 and 20 is 20 in college is is you're starting to be really good um, if you can get 20 wins every year and do okay in the playoffs you're probably going to sneak into the NCAA tournament so we had 20 wins in my sophomore year I think we had 22 my junior year and then my senior year, I think we had like 25. Like we just got better and better. And then they've continued, they've, we've passed the torch on. They've continued to do that. Uh, we lost in the finals of our league uh, my senior year, which was, which was heartbreaking. But they avenged that the next year. They won, they won the league. Um, they haven't made it past the first round of NCAA tournament. Like in my senior year, we lost in the, in, in the Sweet 16, yeah. the first game to Providence. Um, but what I see is just the recruiting. It's just the, the, the players they're bringing in. Um, it's up there with the, with the whole entire nation, which is kind of weird because we're not a powerhouse. Um, and it's not an attracting town outside of, like, you know, Ohio State's in Columbus. Uh, Michigan's got the football program. It's a big school. Right. We don't have that. You know, you come to Clarkson, you're playing hockey and hockey only, and that's all you're focusing on. So I think that's the, the grab there. And kids that go there, they love the game because it's, literally you can't do anything else. There's nothing else to do. Um, so you're you're 100 percent all in on hockey, and I think that's why they've done so well. And and Josh Howji is assistant coach there, and he's he does a lot of the recruiting. He's just done an amazing job. They, those guys sign in the NHL every year. Um, it's great. It's a it's a great spot to play. Now, as you said in the beginning, um, you said you kind of got to a point where you knew you weren't gonna go much further with it. How did you decide what to do next from there? It's a good question. Um, I think it was my, first of all, I, 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 I'm a bandaid. I get, I, I get, I get injured real easy and I was getting injured a lot. Yeah. Um, I had a couple surgeries. Um, after my junior year, I had a couple, I had a surgery after my sophomore year on my wrist. I didn't have a great junior year. I had a great sophomore year, but not a great junior year. And, uh, I had a great summer going into my senior year and I was ready for my senior year. I was like, you know, this is my last kind of chance to, you know, maybe get some attraction from, you know, whether it be AHL teams or, or, or some big teams over in Europe. Um, and the third week of training camp, which like school, you show up in August, but the, the season doesn't start till like October. So you're, you're training for like ever, like your it seems like forever. You're doing like two a days you're on the ice and I, uh, I pulled my back and I slipped the disc in my back and I missed the first uh, 11 weeks of that season in my senior year. And that's where those thoughts crept in. Yeah. I started to think about it a little bit. Um, I was trying to think what I want to do. 
outside of hockey. Like I was, I was laying in bed for a week. I couldn't even move. And those, that's when those thoughts started to creep in. Uh, I made a recovery. I came back, I played. Um, but then the last game of the regular season on senior night, I, I got a concussion and I've had a few of those throughout my career. And that was when I really knew, um, I was like, you know, it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, just for my body and my mind, if I want to utilize it to my, to the, my best ability just in life, I should probably look at other options. Um, you know, and then options started to happen. Like I, I was, I, I've done some media stuff like you guys are doing now. I had my own YouTube show with the team while I was hurt. Um, I did a TV show with Rogers in the summer back home. Um, so I had like a little taste of that. Cool. I was thinking about law school. I had some, I did have some opportunities to go play in Europe at the end of my senior year. Um, but then I had this internship opportunity with Columbus Blue Jackets and I, I haven't looked back since that was pretty much, I, I saw that opportunity. I took it and I'm still, I'm still doing it. Yeah. That's always kind of wise. And I mean, obviously like personally speaking, when you're, when you get an injury, like you really have to think later in life, like I'm sure a lot of pro football players, hockey players, they really, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big decision of if they want to continue or not. And that's, you know, if it's career career ending but it's it's great to hear i mean obviously we'll get into it later um but you had a, another outlet kind of still surrounding the hockey base and um i mean you're with a great organization so it's cool that you kind of found the light and you're still looks like you're still enjoying it yeah you know what like i always say this to myself like i think i'm one of the luckiest guys out there you know i i definitely work hard and i, I try and earn everything i get but you know opportunities have come my way and and uh and I, I have to acknowledge that. And I was I was just in the right place at the right time for the for the internship with Columbus. Um, and yeah, I took it. Now I'm with the Blues, and yeah, it's it's been awesome. So yeah, how how did that start? You just took an internship and internship, and like, how did you transform into this video analyst? Yeah. So um, uh, like I said, near the end of my, I think I think our season was over. Um, you know, exams were coming up. I had an extreme case of senioritis. Wasn't you know like I, I saw the I saw the finish line for college, and I was like just cruising. And I got an e I got an email from my coach Casey Jones with a forwarded email from um, a guy by the name of Tom Bark who works for the Blue Jackets. And they always there's a connection with Columbus and Clarkson because Yarmo Kekalainen, who's the GM, he went to Clarkson. He played there. Um, there's a few guys in the organization, uh, Chris Clark, who's the head of development and also the GM of Cleveland, um, where, where Zach plays. He played at Clarkson. So there's just like a connection and they wanted to, I think, bring on an alumni and uh, took the interview. At the time, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. But, um, yeah, I just sort of evolved into this role and got onto the video side of things. And um, I love it. It's great. Now, I know you can't go too far into what you do, but would you give be able to give us a little outline of your role? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, my main, my main objective uh, behind my title would be, you know, especially with uh, the, if, uh, the amateur side of things for the draft. You know, we have scouts all over the world that are traveling like crazy, you know, away from their family five to six days of the week. Um, and they, they, they do a tremendous job on knowing these players. And I kind of add an aspect of that where, you know, say for the OHL, for example, say you're in Kingston uh, watching a game one weekend, but you're not, you're missing the game in Sarnia. You know, I'm a guy that gets that game to, to the scout so he can watch it. Um, so pretty much I'm just providing video uh, and, and, and working with the scouts hand, on, hand in hand on what kind of video we need on players and just getting to know the player more because um, that is an option now. Um, because you can't, you can't be in 10 places at once. So you gotta, you gotta use video. So that, that's how it comes through me, uh, on the pro side, same thing on the pro side, we're looking at players all around the league. Uh, I'm getting video for those guys. Uh, and then also on game nights, uh, on home game nights, I don't travel with the team, but I work with our, I work with our coaching staff. Um, and I help check offside calls, uh, and cha coaches challenges. So offsides and, and, uh, Goaltender interference, we have the video replay and I'm the one running the video replay. And then our coach, our video coach is communicating with our coaches on the bench, deciding on whether we, whether we want to challenge it or not. So um, that's a little cool like thing I get to do. And um, that's pretty much the gist of it. There's a lot of things that I do, but that's kind of the overhaul. Of it. What, yeah. What's the relationship like with the players on the team? Like just as people who don't know and are curious. 
kind of I kind of keep an arm's length away from them. I, I you know I'm down in the dressing room area for the games, but I, I don't communicate too much with them. Um, you know, being on the management side of things, you're on a different you're on the you're on the other side of the aisle um, a little bit. But um, you know, I do know that it's an unbelievable group of guys. They're really close, just from just from my own observation being down there. They're really, really, really tight group. Um, they have a lot of fun, um, and they, they love to play the game, and, and they're very, very competitive. Um, you know, being in that video coach's room, you know, sometimes in between periods, guys come in and they want to watch something that they messed up in the period prior, and it's just cool to see that. Like, you got grown men, you know, always wanting to get better and improve. Um, so it's, it's a pretty special group to be around because a lot of those guys, you know, won the cup last year, and it's, it's just cool to see um, how they – how they go to battle every night. Just so like my last little thing, I'm curious. Um, so when you, like, like you said, you have to go like all over the place, kind of like tape all these, uh, the, the games and stuff. Did you, did you always have that kind of like tech mindset or did you learn most of that like through your internship and stuff? I think I've always uh, been a little tech savvy. Like I've always uh, wanted to learn, like, you know, I've always, you could ask Zach or you've already talked to him, but I used to make like highlight videos of his, of his career and like pump them up and put some music behind it. I used to always love doing that. Uh, and then obviously at Clarkson, I had that YouTube show. I, I created it and edited it all myself. So I just kind of came into it. I didn't like strive out to do it, but I, I liked it. So I just, I just was attracted to the idea of it. And that's just kind of how it's evolved. And, right. you know, now it's, it's full forced. All I do is video and it's, it's, uh, I've learned a lot and it's, it's, a, it's, it's everything nowadays, you know, technology, it's, it's progressing like crazy. So you're always trying to keep up with the next best thing. And um, yeah. Yeah. So I think I've just kind of grown into it for sure. Awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. It's, it's cool to hear the behind the scenes work of, of what happens in the NHL. Yeah. You know, like being a player, you don't, you don't know, right. You just, you just go out and play. So seeing the other side of things is cool. And, um, meeting all the people behind the scenes is, um, you know, our staff here in St. Louis is is tremendous. They everyone works so so hard, and it's like very very. Uh, it's very easy to get to the rink every day and work because everyone else is doing the same thing, and uh, very contagious. The work ethic here, um, yeah, I, I'm lucky. I keep saying it. I'm a lucky kid. I think the last question, just to wrap it up, uh, we're gonna talk. I, we tied a lot of stuff with Zach to you and we'll tie a lot of things with you to Zach just because we got you guys coming out back to back. But what was it like ended up working in a AHL, NHL role with on the same team as your brother, even though you guys weren't necessarily playing? Wasn't that, was that not pretty cool? Yeah. Yeah. We've, and, and like, just to go back a little bit, like we've, we've always kind of followed each other. Like when I played, when I went to Clarkson, he got, he signed with Buffalo. So we were in the same state. But before that, when I was playing in Penticton, he got traded to the Canucks. So we were in the same province there uh, and I got to see some games there too. Um, but yeah, no, that was amazing. Um, you know, being able to just drive two hours north of Columbus and watch him play like all the time was, was great. Uh, it was a little weird, like just being on the, being in meetings where like his name's brought up and I'm just kind of sitting there like, <laughs> oh, it's my brother. Like, I hope they say something nice, you know, but it, it was, it was cool. It was just cool to like be in the same organization kind of like, when we talked, it was, you know, we were just talking about the Blue Jackets and, and the Monsters. Um, yeah, I, I do miss that. Like, that's one thing being here. I'm not close to family at all. I'm, like, in the middle of the U.S. There's no one near me at all. Right. So it was kind of cool just to hop in a car and drive two hours and see see his uh, see Brooksy. Now he's got another little one named Bo, but see Brooksy and, and watch his game. And he's – I love watching my brother play. Like, I've always loved that. If you ask my dad – when I was really young, you know, there's kids in the rink during the games out playing mini sticks and uh, around the ice. I didn't do that. I sat there and watched. I loved watching my two older brothers play. And um, still to this day, I, I, I get nervous watching Zach play. I really do. Yeah, that's that's so cool. I think that's a perfect way to wrap everything up. I think we've had you for almost 45 minutes now. So thank you so much from all of us. And Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I think it's super cool you guys are doing this. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely share everything I can once this, once this gets published. And, uh, yeah, guys, keep grinding. And I appreciate you having me on.